workers and makers of great stuff. Today I thought I'd share um, the technique I use to make or, or, or to, to prepare shellac and, and apply it. Um, I use uh, shellac flakes. Start, start from the flakes. Um, they're available from a, a couple of places, um, but you can buy them in this, uh, in this flake form uh, and then mix it from there. Uh, I've got a, a scale, uh, an expensive uh, kitchen scale. Um, a coffee grinder. Uh, that's going to help us uh, get the process started. Uh, some, uh, some alcohol. I actually use this uh, Balin uh, product, which is, um, uh, I, I don't know that it's better than, than, than plain old denatured alcohol off the shelf, which really works well, but uh, my good buddy Wilbur Pan, uh, who is a woodworker and a renowned expert on Japanese tools, uh, also happens to be a doctor. And he's told me on numerous occasions that the stuff that they put in denatured alcohol is is pretty bad stuff, uh, you know, pretty harmful uh, chemistry in there. So uh, I took his advice and, and, and I went with the, the Balin project product, which is uh, much more uh, friendly. I've got some measuring cups and uh, and the like because we're gonna we're gonna measure by weight for the shellac and then we're gonna measure by um, by volume for the uh, for the alcohol mixture. So uh, let's get started with the project. Okay, so I've put a container on the scale and zeroed it out, and I probably can't see that, but uh, we're at zero now. And we're going to add some. We're going to weigh some shellac flakes. Um, the uh, the thickness, if you will, of the shellac is is measured in the pound cut, and 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 that means um, how many pounds of shellac one might mix with a gallon of solvent. Um, to come to a specific cut and you know pretty common cut if you buy a can of shellac at the home center is going to be a two pound cut I find that a little thick a little heavy for um, for furniture um, and and if you mix uh, uh, one pound of, of flakes or one pound of shellac into the solvent you get a one pound cut etc etc I'm breaking that down into a much smaller batch I'm going to make eight ounces of shellac here um, so I'm going to use one and a half ounces of shellac flakes um, and that's going to give me uh, about a 1.5 pound cut. Um, so let's get this up. My scale uh, cut itself off. It timed out because I'm yapping. So let's get going. Let's put about let's put an ounce and a half of flakes uh, into here. I'm a little over. This, by the way, is blonde shellac. These shakes are very uh, uh, clear looking. Uh, 1.6, good enough. Um, and, and it'll give a, a, a very clear uh, uh, finish. Um, if you do something like uh, garnet shellac, um, you can see that's, that's a darker uh, color. You can get amber shellac. There's, there's, there's several, di several different uh, variations of shellac, um, most of which are de-waxed de uh, shellacs. Um, but I like the amber for most projects. Sometimes I use the garnet if I want a, a, a little darker finish. And, and at times I've mixed the, the garnet and the amber. Other times I'll put down a coat, uh, a couple of coats of garnet, uh, let that get into the green of the wood until the film builds, and then I'll go over the top of that with, uh, with amber or uh, blonde. But you know, you can experiment with that and, and determine you know what tone of finish uh, you want to get out of your shellac. So now I got my my, my ounce and a half uh, by weight of shellac here. Um, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that in uh, a coffee grinder. And we're going to break these break these flakes down to help them uh, dissolve a, a lot better. And this is just an inexpensive coffee grind you can pick up uh, anywhere for uh, not too much money. Okay, that was pretty quick work and you can see, well there's still some flakes now, let me uh... I don't know if you can, you can tell by sound, um, you can kind of hear the, the flakes uh, rattling around in there and when that sound goes away you're generally done. I've got a uh, mayonnaise jar here, it's plastic by the way, and now I'll transfer my ground 
shellac flakes into here. Okay, get that out of the way. Now we've got to put a solvent in there, and as I mentioned earlier, I like to use this um, this safer product. And we're going to make an eight ounce uh, eight ounce batch here. So uh, let's get eight ounces in there. I don't think there's enough in this can. I might just make it. I don't know. Oh, looky there, we got our eight ounces. All right. So we'll pour our solvent into our ground up flakes, like so. And then we add my secret ingredient, and uh, you can get most of them wet down there. My secret ingredients is um, 5 16th hex nuts. You'll find out why later. I'm going to put a handful, handful of those in there, nice and clear, and a couple more. Now what we want to do is get the, get the, um, get the shellac uh, in, in, into, into uh, a solution. That's going to take about a day, believe it or not, um, for everything to work out. Unless we do something to speed it up, um, you know, it depends on how often you, you're around to shake it. So if you're in the shop working on a project and you you start this, you uh, every 15 minutes or so you go grab it and uh, you know shake it up and mix it up, and eventually you'll have a nice uh, 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 eight ounces of shellac. But uh, we're going to take a little different a uh, little different twist at it um, and and see if we can get that uh, into solution uh, a lot faster. All right. Okay, so here we have a little something I, I concocted to help uh, get this process moving along a little more quickly. Um, this is a, a what's called a dental vibrator. And, you know, when I bought it, I was looking for something, you know, to shake up my shellac. And I said, dental? I didn't know what it was. Well, my, my sister is a former dental hygienist, and she explained to me that uh, what the dentist would use this for is after they make an impression, uh, you know, uh, for, for your teeth, they will make a plaster mold from that impression and they use this to vibrate the plaster into the mold to make sure that every nook cranny and detail gets gets transferred properly so uh i don't know what i paid for it i i bought this about a year or two ago with the idea of doing this and then it sat on a shelf all that time and i just recently uh, got around to uh to working this out built a simple little cradle here um you know for the for the vibrator, uh, took the base of the vibrator off, screwed up from the bottom. So this is this is nicely secured to the uh, to the to the platform there, and then I've, I've, I've screwed some Velcro straps onto it, and we'll just use that to to snugly hold this jar into place here. I'm trying to get it tight as I can. There we go. And I'm using I'm using a plastic uh, uh, jar, by the way, because you know we've got some some uh, uh, metal nuts in there, and uh, I wasn't sure what all that rattling around the glass for an hour or more I uh, was going to do. And we turn it on, and here we are agitating, and I've got to stop it from sliding. I've got to just uh, wipe down this granite top that I use on my sharpening area here and, uh, and, and moisten that pad and it'll, it'll stay put for, for a long time. Uh, and that's how we get the, uh, get the process moving along. I'm going to put a timer on this now and, uh, and, and let you know about how long it took to, to shake this all up. Okay, it's been about an hour. Let's see how our shellac is dissolved. Yeah. 
I see a little sediment in there. Uh, full disclosure, I spilled the, the shellac flakes on my bench <laughs> before I put them in that cup and I wiped them uh, onto the back of the bag. But so, but we'll get rid of that in, in no time. Let's let this settle for you know 15, 20 minutes, and we'll get a better picture as to how much um, we got all that shellac into solution. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, a little less, I guess, and let, let's see if this uh, all settled out here and uh, hold up to the light. And I don't see any solids left in that uh, mixture. I see my residue. Um, but this, this shellac is good to go in, uh, in about an hour. Okay, let's see if we can get this shellac ready to use now. Um, I'm going to wipe this shellac onto the piece. So a lot of people uh, have uh, concerns with shellac because it's, uh, it, it just dries so fast and you, you wind up with brush marks if you try to brush it. A lot of people don't have uh, the proper uh, facilities for spraying it on. Um, you could pad it on, um, you know, but that, uh, you know, I've never been a fan of padding. I just find the pad is a little bit bulky and um, you know, it takes a bit of maintenance. So uh, I'm going to use, uh, show you a technique here that I learned from a friend of mine, Dave Healy. Uh, he, he's a pretty interesting guy. Uh, he does a lot of uh, uh, historical reenactments and, and, uh, and things like that at historic villages. Um, just a really great guy. And, and he told me this uh, a few years ago. So we're, we're going to make a blend. Uh, we're going to take some of our new shellac. Oh, what am I doing? We have to strain this. We can't just use that shellac with sediment and potential hazards in it. So we'll take a piece of cheesecloth here and we'll put it into a fresh container. More or less strain the, um, strain the shellac with the cheesecloth. Get our nuts and bolts out of there. Let that run through, and I can know if you can see. I, I can see some of the sediment uh, from my bench uh, that we just filtered out, and that seems to be about done dripping. Put that aside for a minute, and now we've got some nice clean shellac. So. Um, what we'll do is we'll make a blend. I'm going to make three parts or three ounces of this one and a half pound cut. Put it in this little container. And to that, I'm going to add an ounce or one part of mineral spirits. Yep, mineral spirits. Uh, let me turn this to the ounce measurement here. Uh, one fluid ounce, there it is. So we'll, we'll add this ounce of mineral spirits. And we'll get that in the same container. And we now have a solution that is a wipe-on shellac. This is an important step here. We're going to mark that we made this in August. Two thousand seventeen. And that's important because you're going to get about six months out of a, 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 a mix, and um, that, that's about it. You, I, you, know, you can go longer, um, but if it's more than six months, I would definitely want to, um, I would definitely want to test it uh, before I used it because, um, look, it's just not worth 
taking a gamble. Right? You put a lot of work into, into making a piece, a uh, whole lot of hours, a whole lot of materials. Last thing you want to do is be you know, fooling around with a bad uh, shellac that you've got to get off after you realize the first uh, couple of coats are going to be here. Okay, so we have here our one and a half pound cut shellac mineral spirits mix. These guys don't want to go into solution. Um, they just don't like each other. So we've got to make sure we keep it, keep it agitated. I like these things. They're called handy wipes. They've been around for a million years. They're kind of the precursor to paper towels when I was a little kid. Um, and I, I like them for, for the reason that um, if you take a piece of this stuff and fold it over into a wiping uh, pad, um, it holds a lot of material, A, and it's lint free, so nothing's going to come off of it um, uh, into your uh, work. I have here just a piece of walnut. Uh, it, it, it's a leftover from a job. It had been machined. I just took a smooth plane to it and sanded it to 220. I'm going to put uh, some shellac on my little pad here, and we can now wipe it on very comfortably, very thin, even coat. And the reason is that we've got some mineral spirits in there that are keeping it flowing uh, long enough for me to really get a nice uh, even wipe. I don't have to, you know, worry about brush marks and flaring off the ends and uh, leaving lines and, and the like. Um, I simply wipe it on. Um, it's a thin coat, but uh, it goes on so quickly and it dries so quickly that I will put three or four coats of shellac on in a day. Um, you know, just, just a couple of minutes after you put it on, um, th this stuff's going to be dry. It's, it's pretty much dry now. Um, I'll, do, I'll do my three or four coats like this. And then the next day, I'll take some uh, synthetic steel wool and I'll just rub it out, get it nice and flat, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, get all the dust back off it, and I'll put three or four more coats. And maybe I'll do that over the course of three days, um, depending on what kind of finish I want. Uh, certainly if you do that uh, four times, you're going to have a super nice uh, shellac finish. Um, and, and you can see with this, with this type of a padding that I, I don't have this bulky, um, you know, kind of, you know, you know, bottled up uh, pad that, you know, gets difficult around corners and, and inside and outside of things. I can, I can wipe the inside of a drawer frame, say, I just did that, um, you know, get in around a beaded panel, um, you know, get right into those nooks and crannies, a very thin solution that works really well. Um, and again, I'm not worried about, um, you know, brush strokes or, um, or, or uh, you know, something that's going to run. Um, you know, I'm, maybe it's just me, I know a lot of guys are good at brushing slack, but um, you know, that whole process of, you know, kind of trying to make that perfect pass and leave it alone, and make a perfect pass and leave it alone, and yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, keep, this, keep this shaken up. Um, what's happening here is the, the shellac is going down, and the mineral spirits is flashing off. They don't want to live together. The mineral spirits comes to the top, flashes right off about the same time the shellac dries, and you're good to go. You might see a little oil residue at the end uh, of your project from the um, from the mineral spirits, but you know, no big deal. It wipes wipes right off, and uh, you know, you're probably going to um, you know uh, put some wax on that piece too. Um, so that's my that's my technique. Um, I like it. Uh, it works really well, and um, Again, I went pretty quickly here. I'd, I would have let that dry 10, 10 minutes or so between coats. Um, gotten my little build going. Um, the, next, uh, the next day I would, uh, I I would rub it out. I'm, I'm not going to do it now. But I would use a little gray synthetic steel wool and a, uh, and a sanding block. And oh, I'll do the other side. Uh, and, and, and just, you know, lightly Uh, rub it out, you know, get it nice and flat, and then you would um, 
you put on another few coats and just just repeat that uh, repeat that process. The um, it's a real time saver. So we've just saved about a day in terms of uh, mixing our shellac because I use the vibrator and the coffee grinder, um, and we've got a real nice uh, way to to apply the shellac. It, it's 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 in some ways similar to to French polishing in that the you know the oil uh, in the mineral spirits. Um, you know, is, is kind of the lubricant that allows you time to work with a pad like this um, and, uh, and keep it going. And, and I've never done it, but I suppose we can put some, you know, some fine pumice or some rotten stone on there and, and do a little French polish technique uh, this, this same way. I don't know, uh, I'm sure the purists wouldn't, wouldn't like that, but uh, let's see, I've got, some, uh, I've got some up here someplace. With a uh, with a French polish, well, as I've been using a while, with a French polish, you know, you would use a uh, you know some oil, and and that's a fine grade uh, pumice stone. Um, let me get that open here. Get some of that into the work, and you have what I think could be a little modified uh, French polish action going on. Why not? And the idea is that the pumice stone, you know, very mild abrasive, is, is getting into the grains and um, you know filling them and really getting you up to that smooth polish. And this is working pretty well, um, you know, because of the mineral spirits in the uh, in, in the shellac. It's giving me time to to work that in and, and, and keep it going. Actually, this is, uh, I can't believe I haven't thought about this before. I don't French polish much, but when I do, I get my pad and I get my uh, paraffin oil and go. But I, I think that's a, I think that's a very good way to, to get a, uh, a, a modified uh, French polish. And again, the, uh, the purists would beat me up for that, but uh, I've never been much of a purist if there's a better way. Well, thanks for watching. What I'd like to do now is um, uh, see if we can't um, come back in a couple of days and, uh, and, and show you an end result. Good luck with your shellac.